Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome in to this Friday edition of Snaps, your favorite daily college football podcast. I am T-Bob Abier. Aaron Murray is in coaches meeting right now. He's getting ready to call a BYU game. Uh, so today it will be me taking you through our Friday. Well, me and Colin Wilson, who I'll introduce in a second. Getting, look, these Friday shows, if you want some plays for the weekend, you want to make some bets, maybe you want to watch the biggest games and you want to have a little action on the biggest games. It's fun, like this show is for you. If you want everything else we do all week, go check those. But if you want the best plays, this is it. And our guy Colin has been on fire. Remember, Colin Wilson is the co-host of the Action Network's uh, College Football Betting Cap podcast, Big Bets on Campus. You can follow him on Twitter at underscore Colin1. Um, he is a Razorback diehard. We'll get to there. But he is uh, he has been reading the board perfectly as of late. Colin, what's up, man? How are we feeling today? Well, that LSU-Arkansas game, I didn't think Arkansas had a chance. They were broken in so many places. But what I didn't really, like, handicap the most was that LSU's defense is just allowing everybody to go yeah. up and down the field. What is going on with that? I know we're going to talk LSU Ole Miss here, so I won't blow what my handicap is on that game. Yeah, 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 because I'm, I'm very intrigued to see. Um, I think for me, I was a bit guilty of, uh, you know, undervaluing KJ Jefferson mm -hmm. and taking a bad second half of offensive line play and just erasing <laughs> what was a pretty good first half, right? Like I saw them look right. good. The first half against BYU bad second. I was like, Oh, they suck. And uh, obviously I was very wrong. Cause KJ almost powered that thing. The, the power the hogs to victory, but thank God, Colin, Screw you. The golden boot remains in Baton Rouge. <laughs> That's right. We'll be back next year with Luke Haas at tight end, and he's going to bring that thing back to Fayetteville. Don't worry. We'll come get it next year. Um, all right. So I, before we get into the plays, I do have a question for you, Colin, and it regards uh, blind betting. Right now, I've reached a point in the college football season where I will just instantly bet Washington and I'll instantly bet the Iowa under and it's a very yeah. freeing thing because I don't care about context I don't care about who they're playing I don't care about the spread like it's just very freed and it's like okay I'm gonna ride this until you know it doesn't work anymore have you do you ever play anything like that yeah Tennessee was last week I mean there's certain teams that you can blow out and certain teams that you can't and you know when when the puzzle pieces fit like that you just blindly bet it and you don't even worry about it. I know Cal was an example of that this week. I hit that on open. I just, I didn't even think twice about it when they opened up at 10 and a half, a number wow. that I expect to explode. It's just when I see advantages like puzzle pieces in the numbers, I fire on Sunday night or Monday morning and I don't even think twice about it. Now, other teams where you got to be careful here, T Bob, is that there are some strength of schedules that are horrendous, like Air Force is 130th. You have to take that into account. Like when you see these great stats, these teams have been putting up, what's their strength of schedule been to date? And those yeah. are the teams I don't fire on immediately. Well, and uh, we're not going to talk about them today, but I wonder, you know, does Kentucky fall into that category undefeated? But, you know, I didn't just have yeah. like anybody quite yet. We're going to figure out a little bit about them this weekend. But all right, let's dive in. Um, the game that I would say, Colin, 10 to 12 million people are going to watch on Saturday uh, will be USC and Colorado because apparently 10 million people watch the Buffs every time they take the field now. And this is one where I think I was guilty of going with a bit of the heart last week and taking Colorado plus 21. Um, but I'm an idiot. You know, and I think if you do something wrong once, it's like a double negative situation. What if I do it wrong again? Maybe I'll be right. So again, I've taken Colorado plus 21 and a half. What's what's the play here? Instead of zigzagging, you're zig, zig, zigging and then zag, zag, yes. zagging, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, I thought I was on an island all by myself this weekend. Turns out you're right there with me. I'm taking Colorado. I bought it on yes. open 26. I bought it again at 24. I bought it at 21 and a half. That's the last number that I would buy it on. And I think, you know, if you're looking at USC, you don't want to overreact to what that Arizona box store box score was that Arizona state box score where Arizona state with Drew Pine was able to go up and down the field against this USC defense and USC defense is just terrible in passing downs. They're allowing everyone yeah. to convert third downs. They commit way too many penalties. And when I look over at the Colorado side, we know exactly who they are. They can't run the ball. They get deep into third downs. And then Shadur Sanders has explosive plays. 
Well, where is the bad part of USC's defense? In passing downs and giving up explosive plays. I think yeah. Colorado is going to be in a shootout with USC. I'm not going to go to bat for Colorado's defense. Caleb Williams could tear up anybody. He could tear up half the NFL roster. So, But can Colorado – keep it 50-30 and cover that spread? Absolutely. Shador Sanders is going to be able to scramble. He's not going to have any pressure. He's going to have his targets downfield. And USC has proven against lesser teams that they just can't defend passing explosives. And that's Colorado's bread and butter. Yeah, I don't really get it, man. I watch film, Aaron watch film. I came away like, USC's defense looks not good. He was like, I think they look way better. The only thing I can explain with USC this year, because I didn't see it on the tape really against State is, they somehow lead the nation in TFLs and they're like third in sacks. But, and obviously you're like, well, th that's exactly where Colorado's been bad. Right. Yeah. So like, how, how, how do we, how, how do you kind of square that circle? Well, I mean, Colorado is bad. I mean, they're every, both of the defenses have been bad in this game, but Colorado has had problems stopping just about everything. They're off. Well, sorry, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't mean uh, Colorado defensively. I mean, Colorado's offensive line, oh. which has given up more sacks than anybody going against a defense at USC that I don't think is very good, but technically statistically they've gotten a ton of sacks this year. At least Sean Lewis is doing things in the trench. When you have an undersized offensive line, what do you do? You have a lot of pulls. You yep. have a lot of fullbacks. You have a mm -hmm. lot of H backs and motion. And Sean Lewis is doing that on every play because two of the offensive linemen were transfers from Kent state. They're just completely undersized. But yeah. if you watch their offensive line play, They'll just pick up a guard and tackle off one side and pull them to the other. So, I mean, they're doing a lot of things up there to, to manage what that size difference is. Um, so, okay. So, I love it, though. Colorado, plus 21 and a half. You can still get it there. Uh, next up on this list, Georgia, Auburn. Man, this feels a little stinky to me. I know it's a salty Auburn defense, certainly. UGA's... Um, offense has left a bit to be desired this year but like i don't know how auburn scores in this game it's dogs minus 14 the overrunners have 45 and a half uh what's the play here there is a window for auburn here it's small oh. uh and i think the big problem is is that you can hear hugh freeze talk in his presser about how it's not really the fact that peyton thorne and robbie ashford are not very good it's the fact that they're not being protected at all the offensive line is not protecting mm -hmm. them they're almost worst in the nation and havoc allowed I think they've allowed 29 tackles for loss. Uh, this stat that I read on Peyton Thorne is, is insane. He's got over a 50% pressure to sack ratio. That leads the nation right now of any quarterback that's attempted 75 uh, dropbacks. And the next behind him is the Old Dominion quarterback at 35%. So Peyton Ooh. Thorne is nearly lapping the field in pressure Ooh. to sack ratio. It just goes to show you the Auburn offensive line can't do anything. So where's the window that I was talking about? Georgia never sends more than four rushers ever. Yeah. They and people come and they're like, oh, well, Georgia has a bad pass rush. They're ranked in the 70th. No, they just they don't send more than four. They never send more than four. They try to create pressure with four. They play quarters coverage and they let you come to them. And so if there's a window here, maybe there's some room for Robbie Ashford to scramble. Maybe there's something in the run game with four defenders. There's something there, but I think the, the one bet that I have on this game is I'm going early on Auburn because I don't trust this offensive huh. line. I don't trust Havoc allowed. And think about what Georgia has been. Georgia's allowed 22 points uh, their last two games. Uh, I, I'm sorry. They, they've allowed 35 points their last two games, South Carolina and UAB. This is funk that they get into early in the season because last year they allowed 22 apiece to Kent State and Missouri in this same mm -hmm. window. And they just start off slow, like they're uninterested. So I'm taking Auburn – First half, first quarter, but I am i just can't back this team for a full game. For a limited time, you can save up to 40% off on an NFL Plus Premium annual subscription when you sign up through Plus Play from Verizon. Plus Play, it is a platform where you can shop, manage, and save on the subscriptions you already love, like NFL Plus. With NFL Plus Premium, you get access to live games on mobile, NFL Red Zone, NFL Network, and more. So you can watch multiple games all at once on any screen around you for updates. Never miss a touchdown. That simple. And for fantasy players, NFL Plus Premium makes all the difference. Access to programming like Fantasy Live through the NFL Network. Red Zone for tracking player performances on a Sunday. Access to live local and primetime games. Access to Fantasy Plus. Just go to verizon.com slash NFL to get NFL Plus Premium today. 
40% off, that's 40% off an annual subscription, just $59.99 for the full season. Get it before it's gone. What's up, y'all? T-Bob here from Snaps, daily college football show that I hope you really enjoy. And I've been getting a lot of crap on my show lately about, you know, uh, uh, choosing Alabama over Texas. You know what I didn't do, though? I didn't bet on him. You know who I did bet on? Kansas, okay? And I did it on the DraftKings Sportsbook app because when it comes on where I like to gamble, I love the DraftKings app. And it's because they got incredible offers. If you're already a DraftKings customer, we'll check this out. Every single NFL game day during September, you're not going to have just one, but two new offers waiting on you when you sign in. So you'll have to sign up, sign in to see exactly what those offers are. But just remember, Thursday, Sunday, Monday, every NFL game day, all customers getting two exciting offers from DraftKings to play with. It's a ton of fun. But what if you're a new customer? Well, I've got an even better deal for you. You use the promo code TBOB when you sign up. Okay, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Promo code TBOB, T B O B. You bet $5 on any NFL game, you get $200 instantly in bonus bets. That's right. That's right. Put five down on any of the games. Don't have to win. You get $200 instantly in bonus bets. You can go play with those on college football, NFL, whatever you want. You can play with those. That's those incredible deals you get. So you see it. There's not a more fun place to get in on the action than DraftKings. And you can do all your same game parlays, multi-game parlays, whatever you want. So download the app now, sign up with the promo code TBOB, T-B-O-B, $5, gives you $200 in bonus bets instantly. And for returning customers, remember every NFL game day, two exciting new offers from your official sports betting partner of the NFL DraftKings. The crown is yours. Uh, okay, so if you want to bet Auburn, get it early first half, first quarter. Okay, hell yeah. Um, Next on the list, Kansas, Texas, a Big 12 battle here. Uh, Kansas been very fun this year. I love the Jayhawks being good. Uh, this is another one where I feel less sure of it after Aaron was kind of breaking down maybe some of Texas' success against running quarterbacks and everything else, but I love Jalen Daniels. I think Lance Leipold's a hell of a coach. I think it's a tough Kansas team. They run the ball really well. Uh, I guess basically what I'm saying is when it opened at 17, I immediately – jumped on it right now i'm seeing texas minus 16 half over under at 61 this is a big spot here for texas potential kind of statement spot uh what what angle are you looking at here yeah i'm taking texas here and a lot of people yeah. are going to say there's overlook to red river uh you know i don't know you can make up any narrative you want but it just doesn't apply here because in an overlook spot last year they beat west virginia 38 to 20 they beat tcu mm. the year before it just overlook doesn't work with this team they know that they're texas they know they're up against the wall every week but when you go up against Kansas, Kansas is the team where it's like, I just can't auto bet it. I have to put in a little research. And the reason is because Lance Leipold uses so much motion. He uses more motion than anybody else in FBS huh. football. They will send people all over the place pre-snap to get you to tip your defense on what they're doing. And guess what? Texas dominated that last year, 55 to 14. They absolutely ate up everything Jalen Daniels did. Uh, and then you go and look like, I mean, Kansas is number one in the nation in defensive havoc. And I'm thinking to myself, how is that even possible? They face the offenses of BYU, Nevada, Illinois, and Missouri. I mean, that's the reason why you're seeing yeah. great numbers out of Kansas. I'm back in Texas. There's some love for Kansas in the market. It actually went down to 16 before I hopped on here. And I'm just going to let whoever's making up this noise, this white noise in the market, go ahead, hit it, because I'm taking Texas at the end of the day. I wonder if people are still fading Texas, right? Still why? just thinking that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I look, I... It's an unfortunate truth. I did a lot of crow in Texas. I didn't think they were ever going to get it figured out, and it looks like they finally have. So Texas minus the points, the play in this one. Uh, next on the list, a line that feels weird, a bit stinky. LSU will miss. LSU minus two and a half, over under 67. Uh, it's weird to me here, Colin, because I think if you were to go position group by position group, I don't think that LSU has a disadvantage anywhere like group to group maybe in the secondary um, because it's LSU's weakest spot but even then it's not like something overwhelming and yet this game kind of feels like a coin flip because LSU's defense despite having some strong individuals at times like good members of that front seven the defense as a whole just makes too many mistakes their stop rate is awful 
Like, like what, why is LSU only two and a half point favorites against this Ole Miss team? It is the defense that's causing this number to be so low that the LSU defense has just been horrific. They're outside the top 100 in tackling coverage, quality drives, finishing drives. They're almost dead last in the nation of finishing drives. And if you don't know what that stat is, that's how many points are you putting up on the board once you cross the 40 yard line? Well, almost everybody's getting a touchdown against LSU and that is not good whatsoever. Then you go to the old Miss side of the ball and their offensive line got dominated by Tulane. Yeah. And so yeah. I, can't, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like they it's not bad. good in the trench there either. And, and you know, this the one area of focus is going to be havoc in this. Ole Miss is just, you know, they're having they have a minimum number of INTs and fumbles, but they've allowed 27 tackles for loss. That is a large number. So Jackson start Jackson Dart is not making mistakes, but this offensive line can't keep anybody from playing in the backfield. So if you ask me, there's going to be a lot of explosive plays, a lot of busted yeah. plays, a yeah. lot of Jackson Dart and Jalen Daniels on the move. Mm -hmm. I think this thing is a scoring bonanza evidenced by a market that's gone from 63 to 67 and a half. Ooh. I think if you're going to play the side, though, if you're into live betting, which I'm not sure who anybody isn't, this is the kind of game I think you're going to be able to get plus seven on both teams. So uh, I'm playing the over here and it's just a, it's a trading game for me. Um. Yeah, it's it's again, I the, the mantra out of LSU's camp this week was do your job. You know, yeah. like, like that's what this deep, like this defense has got. And, and it's scary because, you know, Lane should be able to scheme up some confusion and Jackson Dart, very similar to how he can create with KJ Jefferson. So uh, we'll see Tiger fans on the edge of their seats. So. Uh, next up on this list and the final game to play before we get to Collins best two plays, Notre Dame at Duke. Are the Irish ready to bounce back against those Wallace Wade wackos? Only time will tell. Uh, Notre Dame favored by five and a half, over under 54 and a half. Um, I, to be honest, Colin, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to make of this one. Yeah, there is a big advantage for Notre Dame in this game. And the fact is that Duke cannot defend the rush whatsoever. They, they are, I think, 99th in rushing success rate on defense. They're terrible in line yards. And when you look at who they've played, Clemson's a good rush, a good rush offense, but Lafayette, Northwestern, and UConn, it, it just ah, weird. It doesn't say to me that Duke is going to be able to keep Notre Dame from running the ball. So yeah. they do have a great secondary. They do are they are really good in coverage grading. They are good in defending explosive passing. So I expect this to be a low uh, stat game for Sam Hartman, even though he dominated Duke when he was at Wake Forest the last couple of years. But the, to me, this is an Audric estimate game all the way. And when it's a slow, grinding, boring trench game, every point matters on the spread. So right now we're sitting in a dead area of five and a half. If you miss the opener of four, you definitely don't want to swallow six or six and a half. I think at six and a half and a seven, you're probably looking at Duke because this is going to be a very low scoring game considering mm. Duke's best aspect is running the ball too. Like Riley Leonard has created double as many missed tackles as Jordan Waters, the running back. I mean, th this game is going to be on the ground all the way. I hate to say it, I, I don't have a play on this game because it's in a neutral zone, but if it floats up to six and a half and seven, it's time to look at Duke. Okay, and then nothing on the on the over-under? Nothing on the over-under because, I mean, these these two teams eat clock like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, there's not going to be any explosive passing. So, you know, and I don't expect a lot of havoc, uh, a lot of returns for havoc either. And this is a hangover spot for Notre Dame. Make no mistake about it. They should have won that game. They dominated the trench. I yeah. can't wait to bet Penn State against Ohio State, the game of that week. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no play on Notre Dame. Are you a Lou Holtz sleeper agent? I love oh. Lou Holtz. He's a former are Arkansas you, coach. Are you out here against Ryan Day? Ryan Day did it say it was, you know, the world against Ohio. So I guess it's right. <laughs> also against Ohio. Um, Colin, uh, what are your two best plays from the weekend? I do like Illinois on the money line. Purdue should not be a favorite against anybody. That number is taking some love in the market right now. Uh, I think Illinois should be favored by two and a half points right now. You can get them plus one. Uh, Luke Altmeyer is going to do things to that Purdue defense that is not so pretty. Um, so Illinois is definitely one of them that is completely being power rated incorrectly this week. If you want to go G5, look at Troy. Uh, everybody is very much in love with Georgia state after what they saw against coastal Carolina. Uh, but it's horrendous. The numbers for, for, for Georgia state are just horrendous. And then I'll give another one, a bonus one, which is Florida over Kentucky. I mean, th there is a difference yeah. here in trench, yeah. but I am yeah. not convinced that Devin Leary's torn peck from last year is completely recovered. His passing numbers have completely fallen off. And this 
Kentucky defense is dead last in defensive finishing drives. Everybody gets a touchdown against them. Uh, Graham Mertz is playing solid ball. I didn't think I'd say that. So look yep. for Florida to run on them, grind it out, and win. Uh, okay, so Illinois money line, Troy money line, and Florida money line. Look them all. I parlay them. Hell yeah, dude! A little triple money line parlay for our boy Colin Wilson at underscore Colin one on Twitter. A very good follow, y'all. Um, gives us, I mean, you heard it just now, gives us such great insight into each game. You can catch them on the Big Bets on Campus podcast. Uh, make sure that you go like, subscribe, and check that out. And uh, Woo Pig, Colin, Woo pig, uh, until next year. Until next year. My, well, I mean, no, we're going to do the show next week. But until next year, we meet for the boot once again. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to chopping up with you again next Friday, man. Thank you. See you guys soon. All right. Later, brother.